Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to be giving an example of how to interpret uh, radio de uh, radiation decay graphs, then find data from them and use all the formula. I'm also going to be using a slightly different type of graph, I'm actually going to use a graph with moles in it and talk about how we can relate Avogadro's constant to it. So what I've got here is I've got a graph of a radioactive isotope that is decaying and at time is zero I have two moles of the radioactive isotope after 300 seconds, I have a mole and it exponentially decays over time. And the questions I've been asked is to find the decay constant of this material, to find the activity at 300 seconds, to find the amount of radioactive atoms at 200 seconds, and how long would it take to only have 0.5 moles left. So, let's start with this graph here. Now, I'm using number of moles, and this is something that can happen. You can be asked about mole questions because number of particles. And just to remind you, the number of moles, okay, times by Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, equals the number of molecules. And that is something we can use throughout this formula. So first off, find the decay constant. And luckily, I have been given the half-life of this material. I know the time it takes from go from one mole, two moles to one mole is 300 seconds. So it's half-life is 300. So I'm going to use the formula from the data sheet where it says T a half is ln 2 over the decay constant. I'm going to use this to find the decay constant. So decay constant is ln 2 divided by the half-life, which is 300. So I've got so the calculator on here, ln2 oh, ln uh, divided by 300, and that is 2.31 times 10 to the minus 3. And this is, so since my time is in seconds, my decay constant is in per second. So, find the activity at 300 seconds. So, activity is the number of molecules that I have at 300 seconds times by the decay constant. So I need to find out how many molecules I have. I'm going to use this formula here. 1 times Avogadro's constant is the number of molecules. So the number of moles is 1. 1 times Avogadro's constant. So the number of molecules I have is 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which is, of course, 6.02. 0, 0.2 times 10 to the 23 atoms. I'm going to times that by my decay constant. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23 times by my decay constant I calculated earlier. And that equals times by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 equals 1.39 times 10 to the 21. And because my decay constant is in seconds, or per second, I can actually say this would be Becquerel's. <coughs> now, those two first equations are quite straightforward. This one here, the amount of radioactive atoms at 200 seconds. So, a GCC may have like taken a hunch where you've gone, oh, well, 300 seconds is one half-life, it's a third of a half-life, it's about a third... So it'll be a third of this. Um, you could do that, but that is not how you... You could do that at GCC, but you can't do that at A-level. So this is actually using the decay formula that we worked out in previous videos of n equals n naught e to the minus lambda t. Okay? Now, the information I have on my graph is not... In, um, is not in number of molecules, it's in number of moles. So if I was to convert this to find the number of molecules, I would have number of moles times Avogadro's constant equals the number of moles times zero times by Avogadro's constant e to the minus lambda t. And as you can see here, Avogadro's, cancel, uh, Avogadro's constant cancels. So I could use the formula n equals n naught e to the minus lambda t, and I could use moles to start with. 
and then work out the number of atoms right at the end. And this is quite useful because moles are much simpler numbers to deal with than uh, dealing with the number of molecules. But it, it doesn't matter if you could do either. But the reason I'm using moles here is because that's what the graph said. So, n is, I don't know, n naught is 2. Uh, time is 200. And my decay constant is 2.31 times 10 to the minus 3. So I'm going to put these numbers into the formula. So n equals 2 times e to the minus 2.31 times 10 to the minus 3 times by 200. And I get, so minus 2.31 times 10 to the minus 3 times by 200 e to the power of that times by 2 and I get 1.26 mole. I can then convert that into the number of atoms, 1.26 times by Avogadro's. So that's going to be times by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And that has me at 7.585 times 10 to the 23 atoms. So at, 300, at 200 seconds, that is how many atoms I have. <coughs> Lastly, how long would it take for me to only have 0.5 moles left? So I'm going to use the same formula I did before. I'm going to use this mole one that I showed you before. So n equals n naught e to the minus lambda t. n is 0.5. n naught is 2. Lambda is 2.31 times 10 to the minus 3. And I don't know what t is. So I've put this into the formula. So 0.5 equals 2 times e to the minus 2.31 times 10 to the minus 3t. And remember, I need to get this bit, before I do any funny things with logs, I need to get this bit on its own. So I need to divide by 2. So 0.5 divided by 2 is 0.25. And then to get rid of this e, I'm going to ln or natural log this side. So ln 0.25 is, so the, the e disappears and just left with the power. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate ln 0.25 in my calculator. I'm going to divide by this minus 2.31. So ln 0.25 divided by minus 2.31 times 10 to the minus 3. And that equals 600 seconds. Now the keen eye of you may have actually realised that you could have actually just worked this out without this long-winded calculation. But this calculation does prove it works. If you think about it, one half-life is one mole. If I half that again, that's another half-life. So it takes 300 seconds is one half-life. So it takes 600 to go to the next half-life. And that is how you can use the, a graph, and incidentally with moles, and all this information to be able to work out decay relationships.